What's going on YouTube world? Dan Larson, real estate here, talking about how much you need in order to buy your first house or your second house or your third house. We're mostly gonna be looking at it for first time home buyers, but you know, if it's your second house, most of this will, will work for you as well. So the first type of loan that we're gonna discuss is the United States Department of Agriculture. Basically, it's the USDA loan. Uh, the second one is Federal Housing Administration, FHA. And then there's the conventional loan. So the, a lot of these can be used, uh, USDA is specifically for first time home buyers. Um, USDA with the de name Department of Agriculture is zoned specifically for you know, rural areas. So big cities, you're not able to use this type of loan. The, and there's some other you know, hoops you have to jump through with the USDA loan especially right now with COVID and everything going on. A lot of the different mortgages have, you know, different changes to their credit score minimums and all this kind of stuff. So I just want to say this before I keep going, I am not a certified lender. It, you know, make sure that you are talking with a certified lender about these things and making sure, you know, these are all things that I've learned from different lenders. Um, but I am not a certified lender. I can't get you pre-approved so I can send you, certified lenders that I work with who do a great job. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, get that off the bat. But first off, let's talk about USDA. So USDA is great because it gives you 101% financing. 101%, where's the 1% from? Uh, so they actually cover some of their lender fees that they would usually charge. So that means no down payment and they cover their own fees. Um, so, you know, you're, you're looking into, okay, I only have to pay closing costs, but you have to make sure, you know, it's in a rural community, it has to be up to their codes in terms of an appraiser inspection. Uh, if it's in a not as good condition, you know, you'll, you'll have to use a different type of loan. So it's important to discuss with your real estate agent and with your lender um, before going into it, but you can adjust it while you're under contract, but it's, you know, it can get a lot more complicated. The other one is called the Federal Housing Administration, FHA loan. FHA and conventional are very similar. Both of them need, you know, three or 3.5% down payment. Um, there are different benefits to each loan. Um, so it's important to talk to your lender about which one is best for you and to get you the best interest rate. You know, so um, what you can also do is you can get something called points. It's, you know, you pay more money up front, but you get a lower interest rate. Um, so you can talk with your lender about which is the, the best way to do it for you. Um, but yeah, so they usually charge about three or 3.5% as a down payment. So if you're buying a hundred thousand dollar house, you know, that's $3,500, um, that you will have to be bringing to the settlement table. Um, one of the things that I've talked about, you know, previously is seller's assist. So seller's assist is great if you know that, you know, you're a little bit short on funds. Um, if you're going to buy a $200,000 house, 3.5% 3, 3 down payment in all the closing costs, you might be a little bit short. You can ask for a seller's assist ahead of time or during the contract because of repairs. Um, and that's what, that's basically saying the seller will bring X amount of dollars on your behalf. So you don't have to bring that money to settlement. So if you need $15,000 at settlement, seller's assist is $5,000. You only have to bring $10,000 to the settlement table. So it's really nice and can come in clutch for a, a lot of different buyers at different periods of their life. Um, I also wanna talk about mortgage insurance. So mortgage insurance is required for any loan that's under 20%. You know, The normal thing you might've heard from your parents or your grandparents is, you need 20% to buy a house. You know, I need 20% now. That's not the case. You know, even if it's your second time home buying, you don't need that. You don't, you know, necessarily need 20%, but you don't have to pay mortgage insurance and you have less in um, tax reserves that's required at closing. So tax reserves um, is usually larger when it's under 20% because they want to make sure that the taxes are being paid. So they'll hold, you know, your first payment that you have to make and they'll hold um, a couple of months worth of, of taxes, real estate taxes that you'll have to pay uh, in the tax reserves in order to make sure that they are being paid and that they can control it. The reason why is because 
tax lien. So if you don't pay your taxes, they become a first lien. And a first lien means that if, you know, if, in the worst case scenario, you buy a house, um, you no longer can afford it, um, and you have to foreclose on it, that means that the real, the real estate taxes have to be paid first, and then the lender gets paid second. Lender never wants to get paid second, so they try to avoid that as best as possible. Um, one of the things that's also important is transfer taxes. So in the state of Pennsylvania, the standard is 2% transfer tax split evenly between the buyer and seller that can change uh, depending on the house. Um, and certain areas also have higher um, transfer taxes. I know the city of Philly is higher. I know city of Reading is higher. Co Coatesville city is higher. Um, Tredefrin um, school district has higher taxes a little bit, um, but you know, it may be three, three, four, five percent um, for transfer taxes, but that's split evenly. Um, so let's go with the standard and you would just be paying 1% in transfer taxes. Um, and then you have your tax reserves uh, and other, other additional fees like appraisal fees, lender fees, um, title insurance. Title works with your mortgage lender. Um, so all these fees combined, usually you see about anywhere from four to 9% of um, the, the purchase price of the property. So that means if you're buying a $100,000 house, it's somewhere between $4,000 and $9,000. Um, you know, usually it could be in the higher end if the house has really high property taxes. So it's something to consider when you're looking at a house to make sure you look for how much the property taxes are going into it. Cause that can really, you know, change the scale for you. So if you're thinking um, you're going to go with a loan that needs 3.5% um, and we'll just say 6% right now, we'll round up. That means you need 10% with down payment, closing costs, you need 10% of the purchase price. So if you're buying at a hundred thousand dollar home, you need $10,000 in your bank account minimum. Um, you actually, with certain loans, they require, you know, a month, two months um, paychecks to be in reserve. So you may need, you know, $12,000 or $15,000 um, knowing that you're only gonna use $10,000. So like I said before, these are all important things to ask a lender. If you guys want some good lenders, Go ahead and my Facebook business page will be down below. So that way you can contact me directly. Um, you can also comment any questions. I, you know, I try to read through all the, all the comments and make sure that I'm answering your guys' questions. So, you know, feel free to ask on the Facebook, like the Facebook business page, subscribe to the channel. You know, I'm trying to always come out with good and creative ideas. Um, a lot of these are more informational and tutorial, uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, crafting up some good um, entertaining videos besides the boring, you know, things you have to know when buying a house. So appreciate you clicking on another one, guys. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. 